When you complete the pre-flight, go through a mental review of the super important items. If the fuel is uncontaminated and the fuel vents are okay, it will have fuel on which to run. If caps, fuel, and oil are secure, none of the stuff should siphon out. If the prop has no nicks or loose blades, that should be okay. If the static vents and pitot head are clear, the pressure instruments should work properly. When loading the airplane, do secure any items in the cabin that could hurt you or your passengers or damage anything were they to be thrown around in turbulence or in a less than gentle stop. We strap ourselves in for good reason, and the reason is just as good for baggage. A friend of mine used to carry a heavy tool chest in his Bonanza, unsecured, until he flew into the rough one day and the chest moved about the cabin and broke out a window. We used or followed a checklist for the pre-flight, and the same should be done once you settle into the pilot's seat and get ready to fly. A pilot who uses a printed or electronic checklist each and every time is less likely to leave a stone unturned. They are not for sissies or those with memory loss. If you run across a checklist item that is puzzling, ask someone who knows the airplane well why that item is there. On many Bonanzas, for example, the checklist specifies that the aux fuel pump be off for takeoff. Why? The engine will hardly run because the mixture is too rich with the pump turned on. Anyway, there have been a lot of serious accidents caused by pilots not using checklists or omitting items on checklists, and this is a risk you can minimize by using a checklist every time you fly. Some checklists don't seem in logical order, and as our airplanes get older, we tend to add equipment that might not be on the checklist. The solution to this might be preparation of your own checklist that results in a logical progression around the cockpit and instrument panel.